What if Naruto was a god in Neglected Part 6? And the finale. Let's go. This is still pre-recording since I am at this point in vacation, but I hope you still enjoy. Let's go. Naruto and Conan talk in more detail in a tent for about 10 minutes, and then they both come out. Conan says, We have decided to leave our organization and live with you two, since you suit our lifestyle much more than the ones we're currently following. And we'll even help you fight against those we were helping even just a few days ago. Since they are trying to kill you guys and take your tail beasts without rescuing and reviving you afterwards. Which would neither be in your nor our interest. So for now, let's work and love together. Yeah, kind of smiled. Nagato slowly creeped towards the tent. And the real Pain's body seemed to faint or even die. He didn't have a pulse at the beginning, but now he seemed dead. And then the real Nagato came in to the kind of semicircle that everyone was talking in. N N Nagato, what, what are you doing here? Conan asked. So this is the real you, huh? Not as menacing as I thought, Naruto said. <laughs> well, well, well. That isn't the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. You don't look so good. Maybe, maybe I can help you. I can use some medical ninjutsu if you want. Naruto asked. <laughs> well, that would be great, but I don't think you can do anything against this. This is because I used a forbidden technique that has some minor setbacks to it. So I don't think you can do anything about it. But if you can, I'd love it. Thank you. And Naruto was actually able to help. So now Nagato was completely impressed and dumbfounded by Naruto's powers. Whilst Nagato wasn't completely recovered, he was doing much better. He hadn't felt this good since before he used the forbidden Rinnegan abilities. Now Nagato and Naruto were gonna spend the evening to discuss the Akatsuki and how to stop them and save the tailed beasts as well as harbor pain in Conan, since they would now basically stand against their own organization, which would probably infuriate everyone in it, though perhaps even discourage some of the members, which would be good. However, Payne also said that whilst he was officially the leader, there was someone else who basically forced him and told him to do everything that he did do. There was someone else with immense power and knowledge. This man called himself Madara Uchiha. No matter, Naruto said. We will crush him too. So on the next day, all of the Jinshuriki, Pain, and Conan set out to the Akatsuki hideout. Here there would be a battle that would last hours. Nah, JK, it only lasts minutes because Naruto is a god. Naruto made about a hundred god-style clones and used his Kurama chakra to about six tails worth of controlled nine tails chakra. And the other Jinshuriki also used as much as possible. And then Pain was able to use more of his Renegade abilities since now Naruto had healed him to some extent at least. And Conan, well, she would fight to her best. They easily matched out people such as Kisame, who whilst had, he had a lot of chakra, he had nowhere near that of a Jinshuriki, especially not the Ninetales Jinshuriki, and especially not of a Namikaze Uzumaki mix. Naruto was truly a force to be reckoned with, he had so much chakra, it's unthinkable. Hidan and Kakuzu were just annoying to deal with, Hidan always came back no matter what happened, and Kakuzu, well, they first had to find Kakuzu's weakness, but then he was pretty easy. And so they fought, they fought him too. And they put Hidan under a type of Genjutsu with Hain's not Renegon, where Hidan would basically sleep forever until they stopped it. Since they couldn't kill Hidan, this was the only way to not have him currently, well, constantly fight the Jinshuriki and Pain and Konam. And then 
became the end boss. Toby, or now as he was called, Uchiha Madara, the one who created the Akatsuki in the shadows and controlled all the little pieces for his own well-being and amusement. The one with the Sharingan and the mask concealing his true face. Naruto said, I got this one. And so he went in with all the Shadow clones, sorry, God style clones, and they did their thing. They powered each other up like crazy, and Naruto, with his skills and intellect, was able to push Obito into a corner. Naruto used some lightning style jutsu to try to shock Obito into losing his will of fighting. However, that backfired and made Obito even angrier. But it was at that point where Obito threw his mask to the ground for everyone to truly see who he was. But no one recognized him. They only knew that this was not the face of Madara Uchiha. Obito tried to put Naruto under Genjutsu, but that did not work. Naruto had built up kind of an immune system against certain types of jutsus. And it was this very thing that made him immune to poison and venom from certain insects, such as the one that Medmanmito put on him as a little kid. Naruto builds up not just a resistance, but a complete immunity against things that he had seen more than like five times, or if it was once for longer than a few days. But now, powered up, he could even be resistant against things that he'd never seen before and only experienced for mere seconds, which made him completely immune to any type of genjutsu. The fight continues, and Naruto is now beating Obito, and winning quite easily. Obito has no chance anymore, and surrenders. Zetsu, watching from the corner, is pissed. This is what it will come to? A, a child beating his entire group and Obito, riling up most of the Jinchuriki as well as Nagato and Konan, the founders of the, Otsu of the Otsu Akatsuki. What has the world come to? And who does this boy think he is? I'll stop this myself! And at this point, Black Setsu released kind of Otsutsuki chakra which he had saved up from Kaguya. Since he did have a connection to her, he gained some chakra of her, which is quite powerful and therefore is actually somewhat of a fighter. Now, Zetsu was the only thing standing in front of Naruto and the peace he longed for for so long. Now, Naruto was truly angry and wanted to show the world what he can do but mostly show himself that he was worthy of peace and quiet. So without much hustle, Naruto absolutely annihilated Black Zetsu and destroyed him from the face of the earth. And with that, the Otsutsuki legacy on earth was stopped, never to be continued. So Otsutsuki Kaguya would forever be in the moon, sealed up, as she deserved. Naruto and his crew could now live happily ever after, but before that, Naruto had something else planned. He talked to Nagato a little more, and Nagato was actually willing to give Naruto one of his eyes, one of the Renegon, which would be perfect for Naruto and his future plans. Naruto accepted and in turn gave one of his eyes to Nagato. The procedure was done and then Naruto the next day went back to Konoha, not as a guest or villager, but as an enemy to the state and village. Naruto's plans were to destroy Konoha, to destroy everything that had bothered him for so many years. Naruto flew up to the sky, looking down on the village seemingly as a god looking down on his creation and thinking that it was a mistake and so naruto eradicated the mistake 
he let down ginormous meteors. And then when Meteor Toe tried to jump up and get to Naruto and fight him, Naruto used his eye, his newly found eye, to push away Minato to make a kind of force field around him, since Naruto had immense chakra and fighting will. And then, for the final straw, Naruto used the Shinra Tensei, the almighty push, to destroy the rest of Konoha that was left. So now, most of the civilians were dead. Even most of the younger and unexperienced shinobi were dead. The will of fire was broken. And the Hokage faces were ripped in half. Now, Naruto could truly rest. So Naruto went back to his crew and friends. And then, after about a few years, the other Jinshiriki joined up, even Roshi. So now, the nine tailed beasts and their Jinshiriki lived happily ever after, as well as Pain and Nagato. Yeah. Now, Nagato actually kind of killing off Pain since he didn't need to fight and he didn't need Pain anymore since Naruto had helped Nagato get back to health, as well as of course Kona. Gara had now an incredible seal, and Naruto gave it to all of the other Jinshiriki, to where the tail beasts would be friendlier than before, even though now all the tail beasts were friendly. As well as they could not necessarily control or abuse the tail beasts, but the tail beasts couldn't control or abuse their Jinshiriki. Of course, after Konoha was destroyed, Shiro quickly met up with Naruto, and they got together as girlfriend and boyfriend, and a few years after that, got married. And they even had some kids. And the other Jinshiriki also got together and had some kids. Now, Naruto and his crew did actually invite some of their closer friends to join their motley crew, since they had now built some houses and were independent from any other village or place. And so, Naruto created his own kind of village, where everyone was loved for whoever they were, if demon or not, Jinchuriki or not, and even the tailed beasts were praised. So year after year, the village grew, and one day, it would finally be what Konoha could never achieve. A loving space for everybody of any clan, race, gender, or if they were a Jinchuriki or not. Everyone was loved for who they were. The end. I hope you enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. This was a little bit of a different story, but I hope you enjoyed. See ya!